Okay, so uh, my name is Matthew Hagee. I'm recording this for my YouTube channel. I post a lot of stuff on there related for health and fitness. I took some notes, so I'm gonna be looking towards my notes. I've been a uh, certified Optavia coach for four, over four years. I've personally coached uh, over a thousand clients. So I've seen people lose 184 pounds, I've seen people lose 130 pounds, and I've seen people you know, lose 10 or 15 pounds. So everybody's coming from a different place. And uh, people always get on the phone and say, well, is weight loss sustainable? Well, actually, 85% of people who lose weight put all of it back on and then some. And that's coming straight out of this book. So that's not a really good sales pitch, is it? You know, so, so what can we do to make weight loss sustainable? Um, and I've got a little other statistic that I made up here. I think 100% of people who lose weight end up putting some of it back on, whether it's five pounds or 10 pounds. I mean, who do you know that's lost weight and never put some of it back on? Um, with that being said, I'm going to go to my notes. Um, if you're on your journey, realize that it's a journey. You know, um, we have this concept of a diet when we grew up. My goal is to lose 30 pounds. My goal is to lose 50 pounds. I tell all my clients, I say, your goal is for sustainable health. Your goal is for sustainable weight loss. I don't want you to lose 50 pounds. I want you to change your habits, your lifestyle, and the way you think and relate to food. So when you're starting your journey, I'm like, what is your goal from the get-go? The New York Giants' goal isn't to make it to the Super Bowl, it's to win the Super Bowl, <laughs> you know? So uh, let's, let's set our goal from the beginning is, is to win that. Um, so the difference between, a, now that's a diet. Your goal is to lose 50 pounds. A journey is on a diet, you lose 50 pounds and you go, yay, I lost 50 pounds. And you go back to those bad habits that you started on. You know, you forget that you're on a journey because you met your goal. Your goal is not the weight loss. A lot of people in Optavia say, um, I'm never in maintenance. I'm always, you know, on the journey. Some people will never get to maintenance because they're always trying to keep this journey going. A simple analogy is if anybody here has kids or has had kids, um, if you don't do the laundry for a week and you don't pay attention to the laundry, that laundry builds up. Same thing with your health. You have to wake up every day and focus on your health and, and want to get and stay healthy. Um, but you're not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to be your best. You might have that glass of wine. You might have that piece of pizza. And that's okay. Because on a diet, you fail. On a diet, you cheat. And on a diet, you make mistakes. But with Optavia, it's just choices. When you cheat and fail and make mistakes, there's guilt and remorse. High, powerful emotions that are negative tied and associated with food. When you realize they're just choices, you say, that's okay. I'm going to move on. I'm going to enjoy the food. Not only do you enjoy what you used to call a cheat, but it, it's, it's, it's not a powerful emotion being tied to it. So that's part of changing the way you think and relate to food. Um, if you are at your goal weight, you know, you've been wearing your boxing gloves every diet you've been on. You've been waking up every day fighting for your health. When you get to your goal, you take those boxing gloves off and you're like, oh, I'm done. I did it, baby. I'm all good. You know? <laughs> well, that's not how it is, man. You got to wake up every morning and still put those boxing gloves on because food is going to come out there and want to kick your, they're going to beat your, you know, food's still coming after you. You have to wear those gloves and be ready to fight. And that's okay. And the other thing is, it's not going to be easy. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a struggle. And it's going to be hard, but it's worth it. And you're worth it. Um, I know this is a hang up. But I, I'm going to run through my notes and uh, hopefully uh, you, you guys are enjoying it so far. The other thing is, is that put a one in the chat if you're enjoying it. If you, if you kind of say, Matt, I feel you. Because if not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my mood. Just throw one in there. All right. You feel me? Okay, good, good. I, just, I need some, some people cheering me on during my race. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I'm going to keep going. The other thing is a little tough love. Your health coach is not responsible for your health. If your health coach were to die tomorrow, and hopefully they don't, and you are no longer healthy, they failed you. You should be responsible for your health, okay? You are responsible for your health the rest of your life. Your coach is there to encourage, motivate, and guide you and cheer you on, but it's your responsibility. 
So take that personal responsibility, even though it is hard and it's not easy. Um, another hard part about this journey, and I'm dealing with it too, is this comparative reality. I've only lost five pounds in 30 days. So-and-so lost 30 pounds in 30 days. Keep your eyes on your own paper. I'm a teacher. Keep your eyes on your, your journeys about you. If you lose 50 pounds in a year, or if you lose 50 pounds in five months, you still have the next 40 years of your life to be 50 pounds lighter. It's okay if it's a little bit slower than somebody else's, you're still getting there. And that's okay. So that's a big thing with comparative reality. We're always looking at other people's paper. You're not looking at the person who's doing worse than you going, oh man, I'm losing quicker. Than and it's not a race, it's against yourself. So realize that you have to have that comparative reality. Two things that scare me is selling the food to you. Still buy the food. You should still buy the food. I will tell you for the past four years, I've had at least one piece of Optavia food every day for over four years. However, I've had clients buy food, never call me for three months. Call me up after three months and say, I lost 60 pounds and never buy food ever again. You know, so everybody's journey is different. However, this is an analogy and I'm not making any correlations to medical uh, advice, but if your doctor puts you on blood pressure medication and you normally, then your blood pressure gets normal. You then come off the medication and then go, why did my blood pressure go back up? You know, this is an analogy. The food though, if you eat up to be a food and it helps you lose weight and then you stop buying it and you put the weight back on, Maybe there was something to the food helping you keep that weight off. However, disclaimer, you don't have to always buy the food. I love how it tastes. It's cost effective. It saves me money. Um, and there are people, tons of people who never have to eat up to via food again. But for me, it has helped me on my journey every day. Number two, the thing that scares me. And this is, again, not for everybody. Just because you shop at Starbucks doesn't mean you need to open a Starbucks franchise. But... Being a health coach is super, super helpful. You don't have to run a business. You know, um, you can um, be a health coach, help one or two people per month, and maybe some of your Optavia food is paid for. But what it does is it draws you into the community. It ties you closer to your health coach. Uh, I don't know the exact Optavia study. Hopefully, Janet can put it up in the chats. But I believe you're five times more likely to keep the weight off when you do become a health coach because now you're accountable to your clients. Maybe you'll make a little extra money, which is nice, but that's not the goal for some people. And now you're tied into the community and now you become a leader yourself. When you're a teacher, you're learning 90% when the students are learning like 20%. So that could be an advantage to becoming a health coach and staying part of this community. An analogy with an alcoholic. If you go to your AA meeting every Wednesday night and you have a sponsor, your health coach could be similar to your sponsor. And some of us, are looking at our, our weight loss similar to maybe um, an addiction because some of us might have an addiction to food. Um, I, I met somebody who hasn't signed up to be a client. She goes, Matt, I think about food every 20 seconds. There's not a second that goes by where I don't think about food. Um, you know, so one, some of us might have, have that correlation. Um, participate in the community. If you're on our Facebook community, hit the like, comment, post something, say hello, because now it's going to still come up on your news feed and Facebook, and now you're still tied into the community. Even if you hit a like or throw a GIF in there, participate in the community. You're like the five people you hang out with, <clears throat> um, the five people you hang out with the most. When I drink beer and play poker, I'm hanging out with those people who are drinking beer and playing poker. And sometimes that's okay, and sometimes that's fun. But when I hang out with my friends who wake up and meditate and work out, and, and we talk about health and personal growth, I'm more likely to do that. So surround yourself in our community. We love you, we care about you, and we share the same passion, and we want to help you. Um, so treat, your life, treat this like a, this is a journey. Um, the, the, the words you use, I'm going to touch on this really quickly. But if you love carbohydrates and you love pasta, your brain associates the word love with a powerful emotion. So that emotion controls your actions. The way you think controls the way you feel. The way you feel controls the way you act. I encourage you to not love the foods that are addicting 
Don't love your triggers that are causing an abusive relationship on your body. You can still, oh, I like pasta. I really enjoy it. This is very good. It's very enjoyable. But to love it by simply changing your word, the word you use will change the way you feel. And your feelings will change your actions. But you first have to change those words. I walked into the faculty lounge. I go, oh, I love Rice Krispie Treats. Well, I end up making love to them. Not really. But I ate like 10 of them. You know, what if I walked in and I'm like, oh, yeah, Rice Krispie Treats are nice. I would have walked out. But I was like, oh, I love them. When I love something, I treat it very well. Um, I cheated on my diet. Right. Well, if, if you cheat on somebody or something, you're like, oh, that's bad. That's horrible. Like, I feel bad about myself. I made a choice to have pasta. I enjoy it. It's okay. I encourage you to change the words you use because they change your feelings and your feelings control your actions. So hopefully that helps. Um, you might um, have to do the five and one again. Okay. I've had clients lose 40 pounds, do the diet. The five and one is the diet. They do the five and one diet and then they put the 40 pounds back on. The, the Optivia program is the five and one, your habits of health book, your system, your coach, becoming a coach, possibly, it's not for everybody, and the community, staying tied in with your community. When you lose 40 pounds, why would you not share this program? That's like finding a life jacket, seeing people drowning and you're on a boat and you've got tons of life jackets and not saying, telling people, hey, I got a life jacket, you should take one. Why would you not share it? Hey, I got a life jacket. I could help you. And when you bring other people on your journey with you, you now become the leader, even if you're not a coach. And now you're inspiring other people. And that's just super cool. There's no greater feeling in this world than helping people. There isn't. Give it a try tomorrow. Try to help somebody and see how you feel. There's no greater feeling. Um, so you know two things now, okay? Karen, am I going okay? Am I just jib-jabbering? Am I good? Okay, Eric gave me a thumbs up. You know how to gain weight. You've done it. You're probably pretty good at it, right? And you also know how to lose weight. Do less of the gaining weight activities. Pizza, ice cream, you know, whatever it might be. For me, it's sugar cereal. When you, when, and then do more of the losing weight activities, eating the Aptivia foods, eating lean greens, stay in touch, in touch with the community. Um, so people say, well, how do I do that? Look, you know, drinking the 24 ounce Dunkin' Donuts coffee full of sugar is going to put weight back on. So people think like, what should I do? And I'm like, well, it's not what should you do. It's what should you not do? And you know what not to do. Okay. So be honest with yourself. And if you're addicted to refined carbohydrates, 30% of human beings are highly addicted to refined carbohydrates. If you're one of them, then don't do it. Don't quit smoking and then smoke a cigarette and go, oh man, I'm right back on. Just, just stay away. Um, you, can, you can still eat food. You just can't eat those refined carbohydrates that you might be addicted to. Know your food triggers. Don't buy them at the store. Say no to them once. Then you don't have to say no to them a hundred times. Say no to them once at the store. Um, or if they're presented to you, put your boxing gloves on and kick their butt and just don't go back to them. And if you do go back to them, it's okay. You're not going to eat a bowl of pasta and gain a hundred pounds. Just get back on the wagon and it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Um, so, something really quick there? yeah, I'd love to hear it. Go for it. 